guy is an absolute genius. I've seen his films like That's My Jazz, Date Night, Sony, and also One VR. So can you believe this? This guy has done more than 80 projects as a cinematographer and also directed four films. That's right. He's none other than David Bolin. Guys, you've been watching him past few days on my channel and now finally I'm about to speak to him. So I just can't wait to listen to all the stories about filmmaking, cinemas and his thrills and chills in life, what inspires him and more. So let's get started. So, okay, action. Ready? Why don't you give me an action? <laughs> this is the first time. Action. All right. Thank you. First of all, David, thank you so much for being on my show. You've done more than about 80 projects, uh, including like, you know, documentaries or music videos, films, short films, movies, series. So um, how did it all start? If I could know a little bit of your like background story, like um, what did you grow up? So I actually grew, well, I was born in uh, Canada. So I'm a Canadian mm -hmm. to begin with. And uh, I was raised yeah. in Toronto, which was awesome because it's just like the most diverse place in the world. It's like every yeah. culture you can imagine is there. So I got yeah. to watch like so many different types of movies while I was there. And there's like so much culture and international films. And, you know, that's where I was introduced to like, wow, there's a, there's a world outside of Hollywood. There is, there's all these other countries making yeah. amazing projects. And that was yeah. something my, my dad was like a big movie buff and he was always like, okay, you know, like there's these Hollywood action movies and that's cool, but like maybe let's go watch this art house film from Iran, you know? And it's like, yeah. as a kid, that's yeah. pretty like special to experience. So it definitely had a big influence on who I became as a filmmaker. So, so your dad was also into, of course, he was also like a big yeah. movie. F yeah. yeah, yeah, he was, so, he was more so into television. Like he, he worked as a producer in television and, you know, he was a bit removed from the movie world, but he, yeah. he had such a love of movies and every Tuesday he'd be like, we're going to the movies. And it wasn't like, you know, he wouldn't take me to some giant Hollywood film. He would take me to some independent movie. So yeah. that had a big, yeah, it had, so, it had a big influence on me. When did you really decide that, you know, uh, now that I'm growing up, you know, I finished my school, this is something really I would like to pursue uh, as, an, as, as a career. Or, yeah. And, you know, entertainment industry is very vast. Like sometimes, I mean, um, you know, when I was watching your work and I was watching your Facebook and I was like, why didn't you become an actor? <laughs> like, you know, so things like yeah. that. I mean, you know. As if it's like the easier job, but it's it's not. Well, it's actually incredible. yeah. I think I think <laughs> acting is is the hardest job, and I think I have such respect mm. for the actors I work with because, and I try as a yeah. DP, I try and give them room to do their thing and not be so delicate about you have to be exactly here or you have to be exactly there. And I don't know. Yeah. I think I think um, I in films. So when did you when did you decide like you know how, that what which way should I go or which which way? What, what is my USP? Yeah. yeah, I think in film school, like I, I was lucky to go to USC, which is uh, here in LA. And it's, it's an amazing school. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. And, you know, it's, it's got a lot of kind of uh, prestige to it, but it, on a very, um, you know, on a smaller level, like I'd be in these student films and, you know, you, you try all these different roles. You try doing sound, you try acting, you try uh, being a director. And as an actor, it's like I've acted in films. It's like, oh, my God, this is really hard. Like, this is terrifying. <laughs> like, I, I could never do this. Like, I, it's not who I am. But as soon as I held a camera, I had such an emotional response to what was happening on screen. And I just felt immediately like, oh, I know what to do here. I know the decision I need to do. I need to push in here. I need to get closer. I need to get further away. It felt like I had a... Um, an immediate connection to the camera that I just felt like this is where I need to be. Um, you know, I graduated high school in 2009, I guess. Uh, so 11 years ago. So I first went to a school and film school in Vancouver, which is a uh, West side of Canada called university of British Columbia. And I loved it there, but I just had the feeling that whenever big projects were shooting in Vancouver, they always brought the big crew members from America. And that was really kind of like disappointing for me. I was like, oh, okay, well, the director and the DP and the production designer and the actors, they're all still coming from America. And maybe they'll hire a local crew for smaller positions. But I just started to get the feeling that like if I really wanted to DP, I kind of had to make the move to LA or New York. 
and that's when I decided to go to USC. And I, yeah, I, I think all throughout film school, I just knew it was camera for me. So I immediately started kind of working on sets and, you know, camera assisting and all that. So that by the time I was done school, I was already shooting for quite a few people. So I was trying to get an early start so that like I could just like, I didn't want to do the like, okay, I'm going to be a camera assistant for 10 years and then be a DP. I was like, I, I want to shoot now and I'll shoot small projects and I'll slowly build from there. The reason why I wanted to know is because this yeah. year I wanted to go to Canada to pursue yeah. my studies in film and acting. And of yeah. course, um, you know, from September Yeah. and things went completely <laughs> the other way. <laughs> like whatever I planned, like, I don't know for how many years I'm stuck here. <laughs> and that's when I was like, you know, I was so frustrated. I was like, I have to do something. First of all, I was like, before I go crazy, I have to do something just so that yeah. I, I stay alive, yeah. you, you know, because I have to you be, have to create. I have to do something. Yeah, because it, I look forward to what's next and I'm, I'm, I'm never satisfied with what I'm doing anyway. So I'm always like, you know, I want to do I think that's all creative. something better. Yeah. <laughs> and all creatives I have, just have that drive to just yeah, keep creating yeah. no matter what. The best thing about film school is the connections you make and the friends you make there because you end up working with those people for so many years. And like, you know, so many relationships that I started day one of film school, these people are now big directors and we do much bigger projects together. And those are the connections you make. But I think, yeah, I think film school is a beautiful place to develop your voice and find out what you want to do and figure out what type of filmmaker you are because until you know that it's really hard to to pursue projects in a way that you feel fully committed right like i had to realize okay i'm i am really attracted to darker work i'm attracted to kind of more dramatic stories i'm uh, interested in darker lighting and a grittier aesthetic and like more realistic type of cinema that's something that I learned just through doing, through being like, okay, I'm not really liking shooting this comedy so much. Like, it's it's cool, but like, I for some reason, I'm more attracted to these darker stories. And once I knew that, it was like, okay, now I know what projects I need to pursue. Um, so I think it's about learning about yourself and knowing like, there's certain projects that aren't going to be right for you, and you have to really pursue the ones that are right for you because your best work comes out of those situations. When you're really attracted to a story or really drawn to a piece of work, those any project I've done that I felt totally connected to, that's where I did my best work, and that's where people noticed the work, you know? Um, so you can't lie to yourself, right? I've, tr I've tried to convince myself to do so many projects I shouldn't have done, and then you always regret that, um, you know, how do you decide on which script? Because as you just said right now, a few stories, you just know it that, oh my God, like this is something I would want to be a part of. And then there are some work you're like, you know, you, you know, with your instinct, like, you know, that I shouldn't be doing it. And then eventually you regret. But I think that all that, that again is a part of your, I mean, it's still a lesson, right? You know, that you know what you don't want. So no, it's a, it's a great question. I think you have to learn and be like, okay, like when I'm reading a script, you know, a lot of the times I, I'm, I love the script and then I, I, I hear back from the producer and it's like, okay, well, we don't have a lot of money on this and, you know, it's going to be really tough and it's going to be challenging and, uh, you know, we're not going to have all the resources we need. But you love the script, so you want to do it and you love the director, so you want to do it. And then sometimes you get a script that's like, it's okay. It's it's interesting, but they come back at you and they're like, okay, we have we have twenty million dollars for this. <laughs> yeah, process. let's just do and it. You're like, sometimes you get seduced by the yeah. money, though, right? And you have to. I feel like you actually have to stop yourself from that because you think of a film like Sony, which I did in India. It's like we had a micro budget for that, but everyone just felt so connected to the material, and the actors were incredible. I mean, you interviewed Gitika, and I mean, she's an amazing actress. Um, and so like, I was just so drawn to that story and I just knew what to do with the camera and I, I felt so connected to everything. Um, so that project ended up being much more important than a bigger budget project I had done earlier in the year. Right. So you have to really, I think it is, it is like, you have to be drawn to the script. You have to know that the director is someone who can pull it off and you have to know there's like good people involved, you know? So I, I saw these actresses in Sony and I was like, oh my God, like, these two actresses are incredible. Like I have to do this. Yeah. You know? 
Um, I mean, I see some fine actors doing a horrible job in a film, and then the next film, she's so amazing, and she and I'm crying in her scenes, and I'm like, how can this amazing actress look like? But it's just the script. It's how she was directed and how she was asked to perform. And uh, sometimes you uh, there's this X factor which you can't explain. It's like the team. It's the team and the script and the people. Uh, um, because last time when I was asking Gitika and she was like, you know, when Sony came to me and I was on spot and I was working, I just knew it. I'm in the right spot. Everyone has right intentions here. So all I have to be is like, be there. I always mix it up saying Delhi police. Okay, Delhi crime. <laughs> all right, so Delhi crime. Um, what was like the core difference? Like, I mean, did you know about Delhi crime? Like, I, I'm sure you've seen season one or... Um, how did that attract you, that project? Like, yeah, I mean, about? well, I got to say, I, I really, um, I love filming in India. I think um, I am personally someone who gets inspired by new places and things that feel foreign to me. And, you know, just experiencing different cultures and trying to understand different cultures. I mean, India is such a complex country. There's so many. Yeah different regions and religions and types of people and you know it's such a hard place to understand so like I was just so fascinated by it um and then you know shooting Sony in Delhi with these amazing actresses and a director who kind of let me explore the camera work in a really intimate way yeah it was just like kind of a perfect storm of like awesome awesome yeah. elements to make a great movie so yeah I, I think uh India is like a great attraction and and I just want to say like the crew in India is so incredible and so eager to please and um you know they're just make they some make of the it most yeah they're they amazing technique yeah. yeah they yeah. make it easy and they're just like in America it's like there's a lot of difficult things when you're making movies of like okay hey I really would love to just paint that white wall that looks ugly can we just paint it blue or, uh, you know, I need a giant light up on that building or this is going to look terrible. And it's like in America, it's like, well, that's going to be impossible. We can't do it. There's no way. Like, yeah. we, you know, we need this permit. We need this. There's a, this regulation. We can't paint that. It's going to cost too much. In India, it's like you ask for something. And it's done. They're going to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> like they're going to yeah. get it done. Like True. it's amazing what uh, Indian crews pull off. And I, I, I just have to give a shout out to both of the crews I've worked with because they, they really have been amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Sony and, and Delhi Crime, like I can't speak too much about season two just because it's it's still yeah. a little bit under wraps. But, um, you know, I I think what's interesting about both stories is they aren't trying to, um, they aren't trying to make police look like heroes. They're trying to make yeah. police look like real people who don't always make the right decision, yeah. who sometimes are trying to be good and some are trying to be bad. And it's a complex thing. And I think right now, especially what's happening in America, yeah. that's like a really important thing that, you know, police, I think it's important to look at them as normal people. They're not, all heroes they're not all bad people it's a complex thing mm. and um i think both stories do a good job of evaluating that and showing both sides of, yeah. of cops and and yeah. i like a performance which i which doesn't look like a performance like you know like there are many scripts that i have done where i i knew it like this like a pressure in my head because i know i have to be this character and i have to and, and I can, and like everyone can feel it, you know, the DOP and everyone, like she's pretending to be some. And then when you just, when you just walk in and you just, you know, that's a natural performance. So that's kind of, I think those are the kind of performances we, we are really enjoying in Netflix. And, you know, of course, all these Indian series, like, as you said, like they're, they're not showing the police as, a, as criminals or as heroes. So yeah. it's a it's complex com thing. And, and, complex and I love what you said. It's like. It's so interesting on set, like I think one thing I always like talking about is, and I don't think people talk about it enough, is trying to create an atmosphere on set where like people can feel safe to feel like, you know, like they can explore, like they can try things. Like it's not this nerve wracking thing where it has to be perfect or pristine. It's like, I hate when sets, you come on a set and there's like a hundred people there watching the actress and you're like, how is any actress going to perform well in this in this scenario? Like, 
how nerve wracking would it be to know you have a hundred people looking at a monitor, like evaluating every little thing. And it, it's not good for me either as like a DP, like I'm getting nervous, like being like, oh my God, like what do these people think of the lighting? Am I too shaky with the camera? Like, so I think it's really important, like to make a really good film, I think it needs, you have to have an intimacy on set. You have to have a sensitivity. You have to create an environment where people feel safe to create and you know, it has to feel like you're exploring, not like things are set in stone, right? Like so many of the things in Sony, it's like me and Gitika are like, you know, and the director were working out a scene and it's like, oh, this, this isn't working. Let's try, let's just try going into this room. Or maybe can you try going over to that window instead? Or maybe let's try falling in. Oh, there's some really cool sunlight coming in there. Maybe you could fall in that sunlight. And we, and it's just a tango, right? Where we just felt safe to explore. It wasn't like this thing where I need to, needed to know everything or Gitika needed to know everything. We were we felt safe to say, I, I don't really know. This isn't working. What do you think? Like, that's a really important thing, that collaboration. And I encourage filmmakers not to, not to act like they always know what they're doing because that can be really poisonous. You want to actually explore and that's when you get the best results. It's, it's not really, really a horror. It's like a thriller, right? A uh, one BR? One BR, yes. Is yeah, it yeah, yeah. Least, yeah, it's like thing. a, it's like, yeah, it's mostly, a, it's kind of a, th I'd say it's a thriller. Yeah, it's thriller. a thriller. And yeah, I mean, that's like, um, you made yeah, it, one, uh, where was that shot? Where, where was so that, that was shot in LA and, um, you know, that's a totally different type of movie in the sense that, uh, you know, that was, we built, we built sets for all of it. It was all in studios in LA and it's a very different approach to filmmaking. Um, and you know, I have to like, for me, it's like, I, I think the style I'm most drawn to is like very naturalistic handheld work where I can just kind of like watch what the actors are doing and respond and quickly move around to that. But I also like, I have to pursue other types of filmmaking as well. And like, yeah, this was like a much more kind of like American type horror movie. Yeah, organized and like, you know, much, the camera moves are much more kind of motivated and specific and we're using dollies and steady cams and, you know, it's a different look, but it's a cool thing to explore as well. And like, I love horror movies. I love thrillers. I love like, you know, David Fincher and, and you know, films like that. Like, uh, that was a big influence on that film. So it's a totally different type of movie. And, and again, like, I, I think sometimes I get frustrated making movies in America because I do find... There's a lot of restrictions and it's not so easy to do things, but it's good to work within those restrictions. And, and at the end of the day, like it's a movie I'm really proud of as well. Yeah, totally, totally. But uh, India, I gotta say, like, I gotta shoot in Bangladesh. That's where I need to shoot now. What do we need to do? When can we bring him to Bangladesh? <laughs> yes. Well, it's funny. I almost came to Bangladesh for a project like maybe a year and a half ago. Um, and yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to remember the director's name. Okay, why didn't you do um, that film? I know which film you're talking about. Ah, uh, wait, Rickshaw Girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so what happened? No, there? we just, it, 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 it didn't work out the timing, but it's like, I, I would love to shoot in Bangladesh. I mean, I hear it's like a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. I don't know. Again, for me, it's like, it, I, at the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't come down to budget for me. It comes down to like, it, does someone have a script? that I love? Does someone feel really passionately about this script? And is it something that I can imprint something of myself onto? So those are the things, right? How do you decide on the days? Like, you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, in Bangladesh, we know when we do a short film, it takes about some stories we can even, you know, we are crazy. Sometimes we can even finish it in two days, <laughs> but, but you know, you know, there are some scripts like that, as you just said, you know, where you're not really organized and you don't have a precise set and everything. It's on how you. Yeah, set. I mean, I think it's I don't know, you know, exactly how much your audience knows completely about like how films fully work. But I think yeah. so much the, such an important role uh, on set is the first assistant director. Yes. And that's the person who handles scheduling and uh, make sure that you make your your schedule every single day and you know that you complete the entire film seems like an easy task it's one of the most difficult tasks <laughs> on set yeah. and it's also the one of the people i collaborate most most with i don't think uh, first ad's get enough credit because they are so important yeah. to the process and sometimes like more important than the director it's yeah. like yeah they are so crucial so for me it's like 
scheduling is really, 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 really important because not only are you thinking about, okay, where is the sun going to be? Where, what do I need the light to look like for this scene? But it's also just figuring out as an overall schedule, okay, it's like you, you shoot a season of television. Okay, do we need 50 days? Do we need 100 days? Do we need 150 days? If we do need that longer period, how do we make that happen? So a lot of the time the debate comes down to, do you want less shooting days and more yeah. crew? Or do you want more shooting days and less crew? Because it's yeah. a money thing, you know? Okay. So for me, yeah. uh, if we go back to that kind of, you know, set dynamic of trying to make room to explore and room to try things and room to not always be so rushed because filmmaking is just like such a rushed process. I really yeah. try and emphasize, let's have a smaller crew. Let's keep it more yeah. intimate. Let's keep our setups yeah. more simple, more naturalistic, and let's have more time. Let's have more time to try things and play around. And, you know, it comes back to the AD, like, the first AD is like so important where I need to be, yeah. okay, this scene needs to feel this very specific way. I need the sun to be just on the horizon and that's gonna happen yeah. right at 6.13. And I need these yeah. two people yeah. to meet right at that time when the sun is starting to go down. Yeah. And that's really hard to make sure everyone's ready to go right at that exact time. But if, you know, so much of my job just revolves around where is the sun gonna be? And uh, the first AD yeah. is the one who like makes that happen with me. So for David Bolland, it's a good script. It's a very good AD and more days with small team. Okay, noted. And great actors, <laughs> great actors and actresses. Great like actors. that is so Absolutely. important. And I so can usually important. just look at their face and say, oh my God, like I just want to photograph this person. This person, like someone like Geetika, it's like she has such like an amazing face. Like it, she's the way she expresses herself is so dynamic. And sometimes I, I would be on a wide shot of her and I just couldn't resist myself. I would just have to like push in to a close up, like, yes, yes, you know. Yes, So yeah, things absolutely. like that are really important. Yeah. And I mean, um, both, both these ladies, even, even I spoke to um, Saloni Batra as well. I mean, yeah, she did she's such awesome. an amazing. Oh, she's wow. amazing. She's, and she's so fun. She's fun. You know, yeah, she's yeah. she's so fun to be around on set and like again it creates right. that family vibe on set where we all just feel like you know we're there to support each other i i love her she's amazing i know you're gonna i mean everyone's going the same thing like you know it's only two percent of the community and you know but still like why don't we like especially after what happened with this um you know of course the uh, george floyd case you think you're gonna there's gonna be a difference in storytelling or in hollywood filmmaking and yeah, I, I I hope so because I think I'm I think again like my my love of films came from watching like international cinema, right? So like I would learn about different cultures in that way, right? I would learn about India or I'd learn about Iran or I'd learn about Germany or Russia or any of these places. I learned so much about their culture through their films. And I think in order to, you know, our art and film in general is such a beautiful way of connecting with different cultures, right? And it's like America, it, America has so many issues with uh, racism and um, yeah, a lack of diversity in our industries. And, and I really, 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 really do hope that like more stories come out where we can look at, you know, communities, even if they only take up a very small portion of the population here. I think it's important to look at their stories and like that's how we empathize with different types of people. Um, so we'll see what happens. I think America is in a, in a period of like pretty drastic change. But if you do watch our movies, it's like 70% of our movies are about like white men. And it's like what what's yeah and it's just like it's it's not representative of the country and i don't think it's what people actually want to see and i think like you know what's really um what's really inspiring is now like okay a film like crazy rich asians like that blew up like that became that became one of the biggest blockbusters of the year or um you know you look at uh oh my gosh i'm forgetting the name of the film um Oh no, I'm just, oh, I want to shout out this film so badly, but I am totally forget it. Uh, but I don't know, there's just, there, I think there's a lot of uh, great films coming out about, you know, uh, more diverse communities in America and they're doing really well. So I think the big thing with studios is they're like, oh, well, they don't think we can make money off of films about 
you know, people who aren't white. And it's like, clearly that's being proven wrong. People want to see stories about different types of cultures. And that was in 2006. I remember namesake really made a difference. And I was like, since then, 2006 until now, 14 years, I'm like, this is my dream. I want to tell stories of Bangladeshi community in US. Like, how come then I see my friends and their lives and their parents and they they have contributed so much to this country and there's no how come I don't see a Bangladeshi character how come I don't see a Bangladeshi story and this really and my friends they're like you know you'll make it don't worry hold on to your Let's story like one of my one of my friends well, if, my close, if you come yeah. and make it you gotta hire me to shoot it yes <laughs> of course <laughs> of course I would love to do that because my friend like I'm sure she would love this episode because I'm gonna mention her name Nuzara she lives in LA and she is uh, she's an attorney there and she was telling me I was like, I was like, I don't understand. Why don't they make films like this in America? And she was like, hold on to your story, my friend. If 365 days can make it to number one. I'm like, no. And she was like, hold on to them stories. I'm telling you, sorry. And I'm like, just when I was planning to do stuff, 2020, I got this pandemic. I'm stuck here forever. And she's like, no, this will end and you will tell your story. So sometimes I, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, until I went to U.S. and I hung out with my friends until the last few years, I would say, like the first time I went to U.S. was 2014. So in the last six years, I was like, oh, my God, it's so easy. I can just do it. And until then, of course, you know, I mean, you know, when you just stay in one place, of course, you you don't know much about the whole world and you don't know that this, the world is big and there's so much you can do. So I think I think um, I think I would give a little bit of credit to my um, my parents my family who made it possible for me to travel. I, they made me study in UK. So of course, you know, I've seen a different world there as well. So, um, but I think it's a really important thing. And it's like, I think it's like a big issue in terms of like so many Americans, they just stay in America and it's like, yeah. maybe they'll, maybe they'll go, maybe, maybe they'll go to Paris for vacation. And that's yeah. great, right? Yeah, but that's it. They but don't, yeah. other countries and, ex you know, it's like if you're privileged enough to like have have the money to like do that, go see India, go see Bangladesh, go see Ethiopia, go see Kenya, go see, uh, you know, Mexico. You know, all these places have such incredible stories and like such incredible communities. And like I said, like every time I go to these new places, I feel so inspired and touched by the communities and the people there. And that's what made that's what's made me connect so much to these different cultures, right? And I think so many Americans are just like stuck in American culture, and they think that it, we're the center of the world and the center of attention. And I just wish I wish America would look more globally and say, "Oh my God, look at what a beautiful world we have," rather than, "Oh, what a beautiful country we have." You know? So yeah, so so that's about it. So my next question would be, yes, so this film of yours, which went to this Sundance festival this year some kind of heaven tell me more about this like how do you feel is, is this the first time your film went to this festival yeah that's the first time i've been to sundance and and uh again i would say that this is a film that was like okay we didn't have a lot of money to start off but it was like this film has an incredible premise it has an incredible director we're going to shoot it in a really bizarre place and uh the director is going to you know, he encouraged me to just really go weird and strange and interesting ways with the cinematography. So we that film is about this kind of like uh, retirement community in South, uh, Central Florida, which is really known as one of the weirdest places in America. Like Florida is about as weird as it gets. Like it's it's a it's a strange place in America. So it was a film about aging and um, and about what do people do at the end of their lives when they've finished their jobs and their kids are off and they've, they've, they've done their own thing and they don't really have things to worry about anymore? How do they find fulfillment? And that was a really interesting premise to me of like, okay, what old people, they just have it all figured out, right? They just, they retire and they live out the rest of their lives and they're happy. And we found out that that's not the case. It's like so many people who have retired are longing for something more and they're still, they still haven't figured out their lives and they're still trying to find out who they are and they're still trying to find new love and they're still trying to explore. So it was a really about a film about 
old people trying to find out who they were, you know, which was interesting. And we shot it in a really weird way and really pushed the limits well, of it. When and... are we going to watch that? Or when, when can we watch it? So that? it's going to probably be coming out to one of the streaming platforms later this year. So hopefully you can check it out. But it's one of my favorite movies I've ever worked on. So, yeah. yeah. I've seen some yeah. parts. I mean, uh, how long was it to shoot? So the full film was shot yeah. in Florida. Yeah, we shot all of it in Florida. And this documentary, so we shot, uh, we did six different trips yeah. and each trip was probably like three weeks to a month so we probably shot almost four months of, of footage over there right so it was a long right. process but uh yeah i i, I love that film and and, uh, and it's directed um, by this amazing and, and young filmmaker sometimes i get lost while talking yeah <laughs> so, yeah no 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 um, all good i do too <laughs> so i was uh I was I was talking to Asim and I was telling him like why are editors so agitated here in Bangladesh like you know most of the times you know they're always so you no know, it's like they don't care <laughs> and <laughs> why is it like that and that's why our productions are like this and you know again I was complaining and I was like why can't we like there's a story and why can't we say it <laughs> you know why isn't it done properly you know everything is fine with the actor or like what went wrong like what is it? I mean, is it the budget? Is it the, like... You know you know what I will say, too, is I think with directors, because I'm sure a lot of people watching this probably want to be directors, or, you know, it's it's the big it's the big role on set, and it's like, the be if we go back to that point on vulnerability, the best directors, I think, empower their team. So, you know, Lance Oppenheim, who directed The Villages, when he comes to me with a project, he says, hey... This is kind of what I'm thinking. Here's some stuff I really like. Here's some references I really like. But I really want you to find it, and I want you to do what inspires you, and I and I want you to figure it out. And I think it's the same thing with actors, right? You probably love a director who, who goes to you and says, this is kind of what I'm thinking for the character, but what do you think about the character? What do you think we should do with it? You should become the character. I'm not going to tell you who the character is. And probably with editors, too, it's like, I think the edit should maybe feel this way, but I, I encourage you to experiment. And I think when you kind of liberate the creative people around you to have their own voice, I think that's really empowering. You know, it's hard, it's hard to be a DP when the director already knows exactly what they want it to look like. Because at that point, I just feel like a technician. It's like I'm just lighting to make it exactly the way that they want it to look. Whereas when a director comes to me and says, I don't really know, um, but I, I, I want it to feel a certain way. I, you know, this, this kind of emotion comes to mind when I think of the cinematography. That empowers me to come up with all these ideas. So I think directors need to be vulnerable with their crew members and say, I don't know everything, you know. I'm, I'm open, open to ideas. You know, when, I t when a director is like, you know, I know what I want and this is how you do it. You know, there's... Sometimes you just yeah, don't then you feel lose it. it. You'd lose no, it. Then you lose it. And you, you know, lose it. It's, and it's just it's gone. It's impossible You're... to create that way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as, I think as soon as you do that to someone, That's our, it. it's gone. Humans are sensitive people, right? Yeah. As, especially creative humans. Yeah. As soon as you tell them that's not the right way to do it, this is the way you do it. Respect is. I think we yeah. just shut down, right? And we say, oh, okay, I'll just I'll do it exactly the way you want to do it. And I guess like my ideas aren't right for this. Yeah, it's very you know, sensitive. Creative people shut down, so it's like you really have to be careful about. Yes, but if you know how to nurture them or how to you know talk to them, how to behave, like he was just saying, respect is so important. That's all we need. You know, I mean, that's the core thing. Yeah, and nurturing, I think, is a good word. Like, you have to nurture yeah. creative people, you know? Yeah, so yeah. It's good. And, and, and I remember, like, from just that epi episode, right after the episode, you know, I mean, it was just like my second episode. Hopefully things will change. We can see more South Asians. More, I've, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll be a bit selfish. And I, I want to see more Bangladeshi stories. You know, um, there's yeah. so many stories. I don't, know, I don't know if I've seen a Bangladeshi story in, in, in the States. So I, I yeah. hopefully you're the one to come and make the big one. Oh, God. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Inshallah. No, no. Yes. It's, it's and, important. And I, think, and I, I think, hope so. So this is like a common question that I have asked many of the writers uh, and actors as well. So I'll ask you as well. So. What do you think makes a story a good story? I know there are different genres. Yeah. I know there are many genres and there's so many other things, but still, like, what story makes a good story? Yeah, I think... On, on screen. I think a story... 
I think it has to come from a really personal place. And um, I think in Hollywood specifically, people, and I don't always, I think there's great Hollywood films. I, I probably sound like I'm bashing Hollywood all the time. No. But I think a lot of people, you know, you read a screenwriting book and it's like, okay, the character goes from here to here to here. This is how act one works. This is how act two works. This is how act three works. I find that so boring. Yeah. I, I like, I find that so cliche and boring. And again, it's like, I start to feel numb when I see stories like that. I think the stories that really appeal to me come from a really personal place. So whoever wrote it felt something or experienced yeah. something and yeah. they said, okay, I need to turn this into a screenplay. And those are my favorite films. All my favorite films, I think, have come from screenplays like that, where someone felt really inspired on a personal level, like they had to write this story. And they weren't just following a three-act structure. They were saying, I'm going to create a structure that's important for this story. You know, yes. Sony, Sony does not follow a structure in any way. It is very no. much like a slice of life because... Yeah. The director Ivan just wanted wanted to show what you know this this woman's life was like on a daily on a daily awesome. level and it's like in many ways people say that doesn't work but obviously it did. And then sometimes you have experimental films that hardly have any plot at all and those can be really interesting if you watch a yeah. David Lynch film. So I don't know, yeah. on a cinematography level, on a narrative level, I'm always just looking for stories where I can do something new with the visuals and I hope that the script has done something new that hasn't been explored before as well. I think I oh. always want people to try and do unique things with their storytelling. So there's no such project which you can do and then say, okay, you know, this was my dream project and you know, I've done it and I'm, I'm satisfied and you know, there's nothing more I want to do. It never, that will never happen, but but still, that was my question. What is your dream project? No, I mean, yeah. uh, my dream project. Yeah. Oh, man. I, yeah. There's so many things I'd like to do. Yeah. I think, I, think there is, I think there is in Hollywood, there is a very specific place for... There's a few directors out there yeah. who get to make art house films yeah. at a very big budget level. Yeah. It's a really rare place in in Hollywood, but if you look at directors like Denny Villeneuve who did like Arrival and Blade Runner, hmm. uh, or you look at um people like Christopher Nolan who yeah. you know did Dunkirk and Inception wow. and yeah. has done so many amazing films. I think there's I think there's a few little holes in Amer in Hollywood cinema where these amazing art house directors get massive budgets. Yeah. And I think those are the films, like, at the end of the you day, that's what to. I'd... Yeah. yeah, that's what I'd love to do. Because I can never just do a blockbuster film that has a $100 million budget but no story. Um, for me, it's like I'd love to have a lot of money to do a story that's really important. <laughs> yeah. So, so awesome. you know, awesome. if I could work with those people, I would be uh, very happy. Awesome. Thank you so much, David. I mean, I had an amazing time. This is all new for me, by the way. Uh, I mean, I, ho I hope I have done a good job. And, yeah, you've uh, done great. Yeah, no, it was amazing talking to you. And I hope, uh, <laughs> hopefully we can make a movie together one day. Yes. Um, yeah. We say inshallah all the time, like if God wills. Yes, fingers crossed. So inshallah. I'm really looking forward to that too. And uh, if there is anything that you would want to tell a uh, piece of advice for new new artists or directors or filmmakers who wants to get into films tell a story act um to in bangladesh what would you advise that what would you tell them well first off i don't i think i think um you know i, I think it is great that so many people want to come to america and make movies right but i think also you know make an amazing film in bangladesh too you know yes. like i i there's i think people like the film market in general right now is so international, right? So uh, I watch films from so many different countries. Yes. You know, I watch films from South Korea and India and Germany and, uh, you know, Bosnia. So many crazy different countries that I watch movies from. So, you know, you can make an amazing film in Bangladesh and, and people Absolutely. around the world yes. can see that. At the end of the day, it just has to be good. You it know, if it's good... good and it uh, touches people and it's emotional, people are gonna wanna watch it. Needs to come from a good place and needs to be made. Totally, and, and at the end of the day, like maybe you won't have all the tools all the time to make the most pristine looking film, but the cinematography yeah. is, 
it's important, but the most important thing is having a story that's impactful. So thank you so much, David. Yeah, I thank had a you. Very, yeah. very good great time talking. talking to you. Thank you so much.